Welcome to the second episode. We talked about the Bates method and how we can naturally improve our vision using some techniques that were discovered about 100 years ago. I would like to thank everybody for sharing the video and for asking questions. Actually, I received a lot of questions and I will try to dedicate some time to answer these questions. In today's episode, I will talk about 10 main concepts that Bates method covers or natural vision improvement covers in general. If you remember at the end of the last episode, I invited you to take off your glasses and try to experiment without having any glasses. So how about we do this for the rest of, the, of this video? If you're not driving, if you are in a safe place, take off your glasses, put them aside and just listen. You can even close your eyes and listen to this episode. You don't have to watch me. There is nothing in the background. I'll be just talking about concepts. And in case you find it extremely, extremely relaxing, you can even close your eyes. First principle I want to talk about is relaxation. So Dr. Bates talks about relaxing the mind and the eyes to see better. And this is what I invited you to do. I said, let's take off the glasses. So let's take some strain out. So once we achieve a deep relaxation for our eyes and mind, we should be able to see clearly. A lot of people will ask this question. If I take off my glasses, everything will be blurry and I will be frustrated. And this is actually the main thing that you need to overcome is your frustration about not seeing clearly. You don't want to send the bad signal to your brain that I am not able to see. And this sounds easy to do, but actually it is the ultimate goal of improving your vision naturally. So the first thing, again, let's try to relax our mind and brain. Don't worry about how to do that yet, but just put this as the first principle. I will walk you through the steps how to relax our mind and eyes in the next episodes. But in today's topic, we'll cover all the main principles so you know what to expect in the next episodes. Second part is patience. We need to build that tolerance and patience to be able to see clearly. An example is if I'm not able to see, I will just reach to my glasses and put them on and expect everything to be clear. So this might be true for some time, especially if you're driving or if you are trying to focus on task activities. But in general, let's be honest, if you are just wa walking around your office or home and if you can see a little blur, why wouldn't you be patient about that? Or most people, when they work on their computer, even if they have heavy prescription, actually most people will be able to see clearly on their screen without wearing their glasses. So patience will build that tolerance so you can improve your eyesight naturally. Another concept I wanted to cover is blinking. If you have noticed that I am almost timing myself to blink every three to four seconds. So this is a very good habit. A lot of people, especially young adults, when they play video games or they are on the front of their computers or tablets, they, they tend to stir. Staring is the opposite of blinking. Blinking lubricates the eyes and it does actually change the visual scene. So every time you blink, the eyes will have to refocus so they can interpret the new image. And the more you blink, not actually extremely fast, fast blinking, this is not natural, but blinking every couple of seconds will give your eyes a chance to be lubricated. It gives the visual cortex a chance to reinterpret the new image that's coming from your eyes. And of course, anything that comes with force or with strain, we don't want it to happen. Example, some people will hear this advice and they start blinking or force blinking. And this, this forced blinking is not recommended. Anything that has a lot to do with using your muscles voluntarily, it will be considered a strain and a strain is not good for your eyes. So a good blinking habit is to just notice to begin with, how many times do I blink? And if it goes beyond five, six seconds, that means you have a bad vision habit. This is one of the bad vision habits you need to overcome. And of course, I'll teach you some techniques how to get into blinking naturally. We'll talk about that in another episode. Another idea is breathing. A lot of people 
fooling myself I used to have a shallow breathing so this shallow breathing is coming from the chest only your lungs are in your chest and that's true and the way that you breathe is you kind of push your diaphragm and then you inhale air but a, a bad habit that we all have is only filling 50 to 60 percent of our lungs with air so we go long periods of time without a deep breathe deep breathing is a skill and it can be easily obtained and those of you who practice yoga or other meditation know what i'm talking about when it comes to breathing most people don't know how to inhale air naturally they kind of force it uh, this only fills about 60% of your lungs. A good breathing technique will be relaxed, will be deep from the abdominal area or the stomach area. The best way to notice this natural breathing is looking at an infant. If you have a couple of months old baby breathing while sleeping, just notice how their belly is inflating and deflating. That means that they're taking, taking a deep breath. Third bad habit we all have is shallow breathing and we need to replace it with good breathing techniques. I will definitely cover techniques for deep breathing. Just bear with me for the next episode. Another concept is getting used to closing your eyes. So let's say I'm sitting on my couch at home and there's nothing to be worried about. How about like you give a couple of seconds of closed eyes. If you get used to closing your eyes more often, you give your visual system a chance to relax. And this might sound counterintuitive, to some people especially when they are talking about doing activities I'm not asking you to do this during your activities of driving or working but let's say you're just relaxed doing nothing sometimes even eating you take a bite and you can just relax for a second or two another way to do it is while in the bathroom a lot of people in the bathroom just don't do anything so and you might spend a couple of minutes so you might as well just get used to closing your eyes and this is a very good habit to give your visual system some rest. Number six, reverse blinking or flashing. So this is a very good idea that Bates talked about, which is if you are looking at a distance, especially a distance, and if you think that you're not able to see or you're challenged to see, how about this? You close your eyes, then open them for a second and then close them. And try when you open them just to stare at one, one part of the visual scene that you're looking at let's say you're looking at an eye chart I'll give you an example and i'm trying to read the first letter if i close my eyes and then flash it and this flashing could be a second could be two seconds but let's say one second and you're looking at the first letter and then you close your eyes again so this technique does help with building your confidence in vision what we mean by confidence most people who have vision issues and they wear glasses they unfortunately lost confidence with their visual system so what they try to do is to force vision. And forcing vision, that means you have to see everything clearly, which in other words means staring. Staring is just trying to see everything at the same time without linking and without breathing sometimes. People who stare, if you look at them, they don't breathe. They just stare. They try to see everything clear. And the reality is we only see one part of our visual system clear and the rest is blurry. We'll talk about this when we discuss peripheral vision versus central vision. So a good technique again is re flashing or reverse blinking. Let's close the eyes for two or three seconds and then blink open for a second and closing again. And when you open them only spot one place. Don't try to see everything at once. Another point is the peripheral vision that we briefly talked about. So our visual system sees movement and colors and details so the only one part which is central vision it's only one point where we see clearly and the rest is peripheral peripheral that means anything that moves beyond your central vision so i'm looking at the camera now and my hand is moving i see the hand moving but i don't see the details and you should be fine with that the problem with glasses let's put my glasses on the problem with the glasses is that they limit they have border they limit your peripheral vision they fool you that you don't have to see the movement around you so you you can you can only see clearly within the lenses and this is actually a very bad habit which is trying to see everything clearly at once the visual system was designed to see clearly only at one point and everything else should be less clear but we pick up movement very very efficiently so opening the peripheral system without glasses allows you to see 
or feel the movement beyond the borders of your glasses. So this is another point that we need to pay attention to. Number eight, first technique that they talk about is swinging. So as you can tell, I'm talking to the camera now and I am trying to sway back and forth. So any small movement will break the bad vision habits. If you are staring, let's say I am looking at the camera now. I will notice three things. I don't breathe since I'm trying to focus on the camera. I don't move and my eyes are not blinking. Do, so doing these habits for a long time just meaning that you're hurting your visual system. Let's say now I'm doing the opposite. I'm actually swaying or moving myself, shifting myself. I'm exaggerating the movement. Any small, tiny movement will break the staring habit. But let's say I am just going back and forth a little. The first thing you notice me doing is I'm blinking more often. And this is out of control. Our body organs resonate with each other. So when you break this staring or you move a little, you break the staring habit and you start blinking. And the other thing I noticed that I am breathing. So breathing means that I'm providing more oxygen to my visual system. So the main idea of swaying is movement. And this is the first principles that Bates talk about movement. If you are stationary, if you are staring, you're not breathing, you're not blinking, you're hurting your visual system. You're trying to see all at once, everything clear. So you are just developing a bad habit. So the first good habit you need to adjust to is movement. With movement comes blinking, comes breathing, comes natural vision. More, the more you blink, the more you change the scene, the more the eyes are trying to refocus. So another point I want to talk about is when you are seeing, when you are looking at something, especially in nature, if you go outside, try to see colors and shapes and depth 3D. We're so used to looking at everything in two dimensional these days, especially with the smartphones and the tablets, even people who watch TV, everything is two dimensional. So actually they were meant to see 3D. So the more depth you see, the better for the eyes. If you go out in nature, try to see the tree and the leaves and how they are actually curved or how you can see layers of leaves behind each other you can see this the sky and the clouds even a small detail can help your visual system readjust to the natural way of seeing which is not two-dimensional it's three-dimensional the other thing that the glasses are not good for is what we just talked about so glasses do the opposite they're very good for acuity or how ac accurate you see letters in 2d but they're very bad in 3d so they don't allow you to see the three dimension. They are trying to restrict your vision within this lens and this lens see you see clearly throughout this lens so you don't pay attention to the third dimension. Your peripheral vision is blocked or bordered with this glass frame so it just fools your visual system to see clearly within this lens and ignore everything else and this is not natural at all. I'm not saying that we don't need them when we need them but I'm saying it's not a good habit to get used to your glasses for a long time, especially for people who are just getting started or for kids or for people with very low prescription. The second habit that Bates talk about is centralization. Centralization is basically seen clearly only at one point and everything else is less clear. And the more efficient you do this, the clearer the vision. The ultimate goal of Bates method is to relax the visual system and to incorporate these habits of movement and breathing and whatever. And the third thing, and this is very important, is centralizing. Centralizing is being able to only see clearly and convince yourself that I only see clearly at one point and everything else is less clear. And this is one of the hardest to achieve, but once you achieve it, your vision should be normal and you should be able to give up your glasses for good. Another point I wanted to talk about is look within. So see inside yourself. If you are just seeing for the purpose of seeing, that, that's one part of the vision, but actually vision is mental. It's not only physical. It doesn't only involve the eyes, it involves the mind as well. And the clearer you see with your mental part of vision, the clearer you see with your eyes and the more relaxed. That means that there's another layer 
a vision which is mental or as we say the intelligence of the heart so if you, the deeper you get involved with your vision the clearer you see life to summarize the Bates method about improving your eyesight naturally I would say it's very simple it's all about relaxing the mind and the eyes so they can communicate better and you see clearly so it's all about relaxing the nervous system actually most people who study and try to practice the base technique will discover that it's not only about your vision it's about your entire body and actually mental health as well so some of these practices will relax the nervous system the more relaxed you digest better you absorb nutrients more efficiently you sleep better your mood is better and you start having these insights about life and dreams and goals and how to achieve them you become a different person this might sound too good to be true but actually it is the reality the more you incorporate these deep relaxation techniques the more you discover about yourself and some of these mental or emotional blockages that were not allowing you to see clearly are only there because you have an energy blockage once this energy is flowing more efficiently and your nervous system is relaxed you start seeing clearly and you have different attitude about life in general I know a lot of people will say well this is overwhelming and frustrating we have to learn a lot and changing bad habits with good habits and it might require time and do I need to change my prescription and go lower how many glasses do I need and, and I hear you it might be hard but if you incorporate these practices slowly you should be able to find them easy to apply in I, I want to start stress this since a lot of people ask this question if you hear someone saying that doing eye physical eye movement exercises to improve vision it might work for a short time it's not teaching you any good habit so I wouldn't bother and look into these techniques Bates method is the opposite it's all about relaxing your eyes to see better and another point I want to mention about building new habit and new lifestyle of course it requires some time but here's the thing inside your brain there's neurons that fire and they form pathways and to build any good habit, you need to keep firing the same pathways or doing the same activity for a certain period of time for long enough so you can build these pathways it's called neuroplasticity and it is one of the newest discoveries in the brain research so doing the Bates method for long enough incorporating good, good techniques and vision habits will just build new pathways or neuroplasticity inside your brain so the results will be long lasting results and the good habits should become second nature to you so if you are curious enough to learn more about these habits and techniques stay tuned for the next episodes and I'll